What up, what up? Okay, so this is probably going to be a pretty long one, if I can remember everything that I want to say, that is. So first off, just shout out to uh, Cortese, Divine Hazel. Um, every time I get to talk and, and, and listen to people talk about, like, uh, natural living in, in their homes and their ideas of homesteads and uh, different kind of building ideas and materials and cob like man like the the emotions and the memories that well up uh, within me it's, it's, it's almost like it's very cleansing for me it, rebalances me, it brings me back to uh, where I know I need to have my focus at. Also, shout out to Mr. Zigzag. <laughs> I, I put Mr. in front of everything so much, so that, that's why I keep saying Zigzag Mr. Intensity. But uh, essentially, I was going to have your face on here, but... I've done that so many times, and I, I'm... I just decided to go uh, with, with, with this weird image, so that I'm going to kind of go into this a little bit here at the very, very beginning, and then get into why I'm making this uh, video, but also why I'm giving ZigZag a shout out is because uh, of the Wolverine mode, which is what I have. I, I don't have any cool pictures like like he did for you guys, but uh, I do have my experiences and my stories, so I'll, that's what I will share with you. Uh, so yeah, before I dig into this imagery right here, um, which this is an image here off of a uh, uh, Doctor uh, Robert Kassar. Uh, Earther Academy, I think is probably one of his latest videos in which um, they're kind of talking about, I think he said cranial facial release. Um, they're basically sticking a fucking balloon, <laughs> balloon up your nose and fucking expanding it and then and then contracting it. And, and you see like, I think the dude said uh, like six different fucking canals or something that they could potentially stick that fucking balloon up in there. But, I would not have uh, known of this, and like they were saying, like, most people, this isn't well-known stuff, and most people doesn't don't know about any, any of this stuff. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for, uh, you know, how much into uh, MMA and the UFC I am. So, uh, watching, uh, in one of the embedded uh, videos that they do, which the Embedded series, they, they kind of follow uh, the build-up to, like, uh, major UFC events. And in one of those, uh, a couple fighters went and got this done. And they they kind of glossed over, like, the some of the benefits. And basically, they just was like, uh, your nasal passages will be so open. And you'll be able to take in so much uh, breath. So doing this right before a fight is so beneficial for that. And, and I would... Uh, I would agree with that. It probably is. Okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be skipping around a lot here. Um, but yeah, it, it was fucking hilarious to witness like the, the people's responses to, to having this done. Because I would imagine it would be uh, incredibly uncomfortable and maybe even slightly painful. Uh, most people have a gag fit <laughs> whenever that happens where they uh, start to uh, activate their uh, things within them that they need to throw up. But, uh, so yeah, I'll jump back to <laughs> uh, my injury, which was... Uh, it was in my kickboxing class, kickboxing cardio class. <clears throat> and I'm very glad I did not decide to uh, 
writing my little uh, recorder to record some of it. So I just had this thought in the back of my mind, oh, wouldn't that just be awesome if I recorded myself, like, fucking uh, snapping my shin or some shit like that. Uh, so, uh, I've been doing this for a while, so at this point, like, my kicks are pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, I can pack a, uh, quite a bit of power um, behind my kicks. Yeah, so I'll just go into like some of my experiences real quick. Um, yeah, j just real quick, because I don't, I don't want to make this super, super fucking long, because I can make this really fucking long. But I don't want to do that. Um, 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 um. So... Let's see where 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 to go. Which which way to start? Where to begin? First of all, when it comes to like training, uh, j just engagement in general. I will be making uh, future videos, especially if we ever get you know the spring to finally uh, spring forth. Then I'll be uh, doing some more outside activities and just. Basically, uh, inside and outside, just to show uh, the exercises that we can do. That um, we don't we don't need to necessarily need to go to gyms, and I'm not like knocking people that do go to gyms. Like I'm just saying, like, for me personally, um, if I'm gonna uh, dedicate that time, and I mean, there's gonna be things in gyms that you're not gonna be able to do, like outside in nature, like say, like uh, pumping iron or having uh, specific. Uh, strength uh machines to, to work with so it's just all dependent upon what you're looking for but for me if i'm gonna uh, have the time to go to a gym i would i would much more preferably go out in nature on a trail or even uh out where i'm going to show you guys which uh it has a whole bunch of different kinds of uh uh, fitness and, and, and like it's almost like a jungle gym kind of thing for for grown ups, which is only like a shit one two three four four or five different different things. But I mean, you you really be amazed like once you start to engage your body and and, and uh, release the blockages in your mind the the boxing in of the mind like uh you realize that you know anything and everything uh is a workout and can be a workout and it's all about your focus and your engagement so essentially like uh whenever i, I just immediately as soon as i started uh engaging with this kind of activity uh I'm talking about the the kickboxing. Um, I knew I wanted to go about it, not necessarily like oh my way, but but just in a uh, a level of uh, growth and, and learning where um, what's most important to me isn't like um, the quote unquote gains or you know um, to hit as hard as I can or or even necessarily just speed or just technique, but it, it it's. Uh, a amalgamation of that word of all of all of these things into one and uh, above all just just making sure i'm always having fun with it because that that's truly it is where our whenever we engage that creativity uh, and just allow ourselves to have fun with something it's the connection and, and this is what uh you will come to find the more you witness children playing how they learn that's that's why they play because they're learning so much through this play through this engagement they're making these connections because they're of the, of the emotional and, and the excitement the the fun that they're having like they're they're able to accelerate their learning processes to uh levels that are way beyond having them sit in a chair and, and uh just read or listen for hours on end uh, not very many, not very many like heartfelt connections are going to be made there.
Also, shout out to ZigZag's uh, homework video. I'm starting to catch up on some of ZigZag's videos. That's uh, fucking dead on. So yeah, we're going to go down many tangents here with that. Um, okay, let's see. So yeah, back to... Uh, okay, so essentially, like with my body, I knew kind of how I wanted to strengthen it. Um, I knew... I came from a place of knowing, like, where my weaknesses were. Not, not totally knowing and understanding, but knowing and having a willingness to engage the weak, weaker spots... Uh, in my body, and knowing that through this uh, impact, I was going to be exposing these weak spots. So I needed to do this in a correct manner. Otherwise, that's when injury happens. Whenever we lose focus, say like uh, if you're exerting yourself on an extreme level and, and you start to lose focus or you start to get uh, extremely gassed out or tired, that's when like mistakes happen uh, whenever we are not aware of... Uh, of the engagement as much and and then those uh injuries are, are going to be more we're going to be more susceptible to those kind of things whenever we lose that connection with with all of our of our bodies and mentalities and processes instead of just uh maybe getting too stuck in the mind how many of us have uh been on a jog or or something and we start to get caught up on our mind and then we lose track of you know what's in front of us and especially you know when i like to do barefoot jogs out on trails so <laughs> whenever i first started doing this i learned very quickly that when i get caught up in my mind that's when i start to uh find those roots coming up out of the ground or those stones or yeah and that's always a very uh powerful <laughs> reminder to get back in my body pay attention to my surroundings so yeah in this in my kickboxing class i uh and it wasn't necessarily because i was gassed or anything yeah i didn't have uh as much focus as i should have had and that's why this this happened is because uh the placement of my kick uh wasn't where it should have been so uh, i threw a, a really strong kick um roundhouse kick and just the very ends of my toes hit the bag and so it kind of like hyper extended my uh ankle like in the way that it's not supposed to go so like there's your foot like normally and then we can like extend it like this so i mean like it hit like you know <laughs> so it, it wasn't a good feeling and then especially like whenever we uh, damage like ligaments and tendons, that stuff is going to be uh, a lot of the, a lot of the time quite a bit more painful than just like a clean break. So yeah, before I go into like uh, my experience, what I felt with it, um, yes, I'm in I'm in the um mode tonight. <laughs> So, I'll just go ahead and say that uh, whenever I was first starting out, I uh, I kind of purposely would hyperextend my uh, both my elbows, and then I, I got, I've done both my elbows and both my knees um, at least once maybe twice on with some of them but it was it was in an awareness of allowing allowing it to happen not not to happen to an extreme and this is the thing with like um the growth of the human body like uh whenever we quote unquote break things or um or allow the body to heal like think of uh Think of your bones, like, 
the process that happens like as it heals and becomes stronger like the, your body w does become stronger and that's that's this is what happens like as the more and more uh pressure we we put into it you know the the uh more amazing the diamond is going to look not the diamonds are anything special cuz fuck diamonds <laughs> I just use that as an analogy, but uh, it's the same thing whenever we work out or uh, we put our bodies through just crazy shit. And, and oftentimes, uh, the more and more you get into it, you'll uh, hopefully come to realize um, your body can can withstand pretty much damn near anything. And it's always the mind that uh, l limits us to how far we can go, how far we're willing to go. And of course, you always want to be smart about quote unquote smart about stuff. Uh, train properly. Train, train smarter, not harder. You'll, you'll hear that thrown around a lot. So, uh, quantity, or no, I'm sorry, quality over quantity of our workouts. This, this is uh, really where you're gonna get into the, uh, not, not, not even just the higher level stuff and, and the higher skill level, but, but just uh, the overall benefit. That, that you'll come to understand and understand through that engagement of lower lo, lower reps um, but but in in a super focused state to where you're focused on the, the quality of it but also you know also one, one thing I want to point out is uh like if you do go to the gym and, and you know are, are pumping that iron um, you know, you see most of those people out here that that want uh, to go with the high weight and low reps, and that uh, it's gonna yeah make your body look good on the short term, but on the long term, that's that's not gonna be very very beneficial at all. You're gonna end up tearing your fucking body up. So for the long term, I would recommend low weight, uh, high reps. Uh, engage that cardio. Cardio is king. That's going to keep you healthy, having that cardio and that breath and that constant prana running through you. And that's why, also, I prefer uh, the outdoors rather than the gym. Because you have all those trees, all that fresh uh, energy out there. That you're uh, sending in. And also, like I usually go barefoot, too, so I'm just... I'm, super grounding and earthing as well and potentially if the sun's out i'll do some sun gazing so i mean there's just like the the benefits of finding a trail or finding somewhere you can go outside to to train or exercise or work out uh to me in my mind it outweighs uh, going to a gym just uh many many times over so yeah uh back to the hyper extending so it was i would hyper extend my my elbows and my knees um, with the conscious awareness that whenever they healed back up that there would be uh, like I, I wouldn't have to go through that again like I, I did it to the point where it, it happened once okay I'm good like yeah it's gonna hurt for a minute but I'm not gonna keep re-injuring it I'm gonna allow this to heal and then I will be able to throw those same kind of blows and, and you know, I'm not going to ever have that issue again. And this has been the case. Absolutely. So because I've, I've, I did this consciously, consciously hyperextended uh, some of my joints, I, w I am able to uh, land blows like uh, at full extension um, with... Uh, in uh, quite a bit of force, and it's to the point where, like, my, uh, uh, the person that usually leads the class, like, <laughs> uh, will come up or see me do that and be like, oh, don't, be careful there with the extension, like, you don't want to hyperextend, I'm like, ah, <laughs> I've, I've already been, been doing that, so I'm good. It's also very interesting just to see what other people see 
whenever they're around me or whenever they can see me see me engage with certain things like I always like to see what people are aware of and what they pick up on and I allow them to kind of present that to me instead of uh you know telling someone how something is I like to see where they're at and they, they just will show me where they're at by either their response or the look or just the awareness and then, I'll, then, then I'll know where the starting point is, where to engage with uh, dialogue or talking about certain things, if I decide to do that. So yeah, um, yeah, this is getting a little bit longer. A little ooh, jumping around quite a bit here. I apologize, but back to the injury. Uh, this has probably been the most pain that I felt in my ankle and I've I've uh especially when I was younger I wasn't quite I wasn't near okay first of all like, I wasn't anywhere near what I am now like in my life like the, the older I get the the more understanding that's happening so I mean I'm just getting stronger and stronger and healthier and healthier which is how everyone should how it should be with everyone especially whenever you start utilizing certain techniques and and, and super clean cleaning yourself out and realizing what true health and true nutrition is and that you don't really need all that much like sustenance wise once once again quantity ah quality over quantity so whenever we shift our focus to the quality of the air the quality of the food the quality of the water what's really in all these things rather than uh you know, being caught up within like the three meals a day. Oh, gotta have this. Gotta have breakfast. It's lunchtime. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, whenever I was younger, um, I never really ran or jogged all that much at all. So, uh, that that would kill me because I was just I was I was very uh clogged up, backed up, unhealthy person, uh for for many reasons. I won't go into all the causalities and reasons right now. But uh so yeah, oftentimes I would I would sprain my ankles or, or pop my ankles even. Uh even when I first started to finally start jogging more, I would uh I would not realize uh how important it is to not get caught up in your mind and so i would just you know get into the groove of j get into the jog and then uh start to get caught up in my mind and then either not paying attention or also wearing the wrong kind of shoes it, it's very easy to twist or sprain your ankle if you're not wearing uh, correct shoes and just not paying attention to the terrain you're running on at all and losing focus of your surroundings and being in your body and not caught up in your head so yeah I've sprained my ankles before I've popped them before I've had them swell up massively before um, I've never had this kind of pain though and this was this was very extreme I'll go into a little bit about that uh, here in just a minute but first I want to say um, I went ahead and okay why uh, I have really enjoyed this class even though this uh, this kickboxing class I um, I suffered probably the most injuries uh, yeah definitely the most extreme um, but because of that like it was it was one of the most profound learning experiences for me because I, I, and I did, I, I'm, I will admit, I did have the thought of, you know, I, I, I don't want to keep going and further fuck my shit up. So I probably just need to stop. But then I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was that masculine thing or what, or that, you know, you're in, you're kickboxing, you're in fighter mode or what it is. But I'm just like, well, let's just keep going and see if we can. And, uh, so I did that and I I worked around the injuries <laughs> and because of that I ended up 
getting other injuries. Say I couldn't use my right leg anymore, so I ended up kicking a shit ton with my left, and I got this uh, huge fucking knot on my shin. <laughs> Probably, yeah, I've, I've never got a knot like that on my shin before. So that was uh, cool to look down at, and like, oh my god, it looks like uh, someone took a baseball bat to my shin. So yeah, my uh, my right ankle was uh, fucked. My my left shin had a had a huge fucking knot on it, <laughs> and then my left bicep uh, was very sore from from arm wrestling people the night before, which I won't go into uh, too in depth. But I will just say that uh, the people that I arm wrestled. One of them, I think, was around 200 pounds. One of them was around, I think he said, two, uh, 245, 250, 250 maybe. Uh, and that guy said that he had around four to 500 arm wrestling matches in his lifetime, experience-wise. And I'm at about, like, 10 to 15 <laughs> at this point. So it's really cool being able to arm wrestle someone uh, or... Being able to engage with anyone who has uh, so much experience because it's just uh, it's your that's your opportunity to become the sponge to make the connection become the sponge and just soak it up soak up that that knowledge and that experience that they have. So yeah, there's that guy, and then the biggest guy. Uh, he's very tall, so he's gonna have a lot of uh, arm leverage. And then also he 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 told me he's uh, two seventy five. So yeah, I, I I pulled all these guys uh, m more with my left arm than my right, but I did both. But my left arm, oh my god! <laughs> if you haven't ever arm wrestled like uh, consecutively, consistently, um, the kind of pain that happens is it's very unique. It's kind of like uh, acute tendonitis. So yeah, I'm wrestled all, the, all those guys, and uh, yeah, I beat I beat all those guys. Not, not to you know, <laughs> say I'm fucking uh, the Hulk or, or anything, or, or to boost my ego. But it it was pretty cool. <laughs> I will I will say, it did. Of course, it, it's always gonna feel good whenever you're the little guy. And I, I was probably sitting at about one fifty. So to be 150 and then and, then, and be guys that are over twice your weight, well not over, not quite twice your weight I guess. Definitely twice my fucking size. But uh, anyways, so, so doing that right before, <laughs> the day before my kickboxing class, and I knew like I, I was going to be in for it, so, but I, I've done it, I've done it in the past too, so I'm like, you know. I got through it then, I'll get through it now. So yeah, so uh, throwing hooks with my left uh, arm, that got to be <laughs> extremely painful. Uh, my left bicep, is essentially, after the class felt like I had uh, torn it, I could tell I, I, had, I didn't tear anything, but just the pain was so excruciating because, like, the tendons. The tendon pain also, just the left bicep. Uh, oof. <laughs> and I have a pretty high pain threshold, so. Yeah. That was, that was fucking nuts. So, yeah, I was all busted up and, and, and in a lot of pain after... After that class. But yeah. Um, it was just cool. like Because I kept getting like all these uh, sharp, sharp pains. And, and yeah, I was getting frustrated. And, like, and I mean, if anyone saw me like uh, in that class, they would have saw me <laughs> constantly shaking my head. Especially whenever we had our rest rounds. Just, you know, pissed. That uh, I couldn't go as hard as I wanted to go. And I was going through all this, but I just decided to uh, get smart instead of get mad and uh, find out what I could throw, find out uh, the things that I could train on. So even if I did have injuries and my fucking 
right ankle, left shin, left bicep, then there's there's still some things that I could do. And also, I made an effort and and an intent to uh, remain very focused on stretching, continuing to stretch my my right ankle, even though I just completely fucked it. I I knew I had still had some adrenaline in me, you know. And that's also something like whenever you get injured, uh, whenever you have that much in- adrenaline pumping through you, uh, you're not really gonna know the severity of it until after you know you settle down, you calm down. You come back to kind of like homeostasis. The adrenaline subsides. And then the pain sets in. <laughs> Big time. So yeah. Um, I continue to stretch it. Um, towards the end, I, I did start to throw more kicks with it. But with an intent of landing. Definitely not fucking landing on my ankle. But landing up higher on my right shin. And then also on my left shin. Uh, not hitting that fucking huge ass knot. <laughs> oh, it, it was awesome though. It's it fucking definitely a humbling learning experience for me. I gained a lot from it. But uh, also, I did the we do three minutes of jump rope right at the end after we've already fucking exhausted ourselves. So I went ahead and did that with with the ankle like that. So. I was actually pretty surprised uh, that I was able to do that, and I did. I got through it. <clears throat> and, and once again, it was probably simply because um, I continued to stretch it out, and I continued to, uh, I still had all that fucking blood flow and adrenaline and whatnot. So afterwards, I, I had to go straight back to work, because that's, that's how I do with my, my uh, kickboxing class. I'm able to take off of work for an hour then I have to go right back, so I, I still had to be on that uh, ankle, and, and that that was hard. So finally, when I was when I was able to uh, finally get off of it, um, that's when uh, all the pain uh, came in, and. Uh, Yeah, I'm not for sure if it's just because, and this very well could be, because um, after I had that extreme, like, acute tendonitis from, like, uh, arm wrestling, and this was the previous time, um, this is the the previous time that I arm wrestled, then went to K-Boston class, and then my fucking left arm was, uh, the tendons and the nerves, they were just uh, shredded. Then, right after... I slipped on some fucking ice and caught myself with that left arm and and that, oh my god, that that once again was immense pain and during that time period, um, my, well, both of these times, my whole central nervous system, all of the pain, um, it didn't get isolated. It, it, it spread out throughout all my body, and I really felt it in my heart. Like both both of these times that um, this extreme pain happened, like I felt uh, I felt the pain not only in my all my central nervous system, but my heartbeat was doing like uh, it was beating like uh, not super irregular or anything, but just very hard and uh, not necessarily fast, just hard. And, uh, the pain kind of, like, uh, went into my heart, like, in the center of my chest as well, and it was just, uh, everywhere, so, uh, real quick, though, because this, this is something I, I think I may have shared, but I wanted to also share with whenever, uh, I did land on my left arm and, and jacked it up even more so than it already was, uh, part of the healing, and this is really weird, because I was thinking about making a video of that, Right before Zigzag made his video uh, of breaking his wrist. So I'm like, ah, maybe I should have done that. So that was kind of a weird synchronistic thing that happened. But uh, one of the things that I did was uh, with my left arm, whenever that was injured, I focused my energy as much as I could in, in sending my uh, blood flow in my uh, prana 
into my right arm. And uh, kind of having my left arm like learn from my right arm and, and, and feel it out. But also, you know, having both of them kind of exchange energies back and forth. It's hard, it's hard to put that into words, what, what the experience was like. But uh, it definitely seemed to, seemed to help. And that's not something I've ever done before, like focus on uh, the opposite body part uh, very intently um, with, with complete focus to where uh, the other one, it almost kind of becomes numb because I'm focused so much on the other one. So it's kind of like I'll go back and forth. It's kind of like I'm sending blood flow to one side and then sending it back to the other. And, uh, yeah, so that, that was pretty interesting to do and experience that. It's not something I even really thought about. It's just like, well, how would I try this? And that did seem to help with the pain, <clears throat> uh, with, with the healing process for sure. But, uh, so that night after the kickboxing class, whenever I was able to finally get off of it, um, I wasn't for sure if I broke it just because of the pain. Like this is, this was such an extreme level of pain. Like, um, my whole central nervous system was firing off. My whole body was in pain. And, and anytime you kind of like have an extreme injury, like, um, and you just kind of sit with it and allow it instead of uh, instantly, you know, going for that uh, painkiller or the quote unquote medicine that you'll get from the hospital or whatever to, to allow the pain to happen, to, to flow with it, to listen to it, to, to know that the healing, uh, will happen. Um, the more you allow your body to do its thing and get out of the fucking way. So yeah, um, I'm not gonna lie, like there's times, I didn't actually cry, but man, like I was damn close. It was, uh, it's like your whole central nervous system is aflame, so like your brain doesn't even fucking work right anymore. Like it's, uh, it's a very interesting experience to go through. <laughs> and I love all those kinds of experiences. Even even uh, if they're hellish in the moment, like you, you gain so much from it. As long as you don't bitch out or whatever and, you know, take the easy way out and go with pain meds or, or, or cast it up for fucking weeks on end or whatever. But if you decide to be smart about it and go within and listen... And yeah, like sometimes it's, you know, about experimenting. Seeing, uh, and, and this is one of the things I want to talk about here. Uh, one of the things I experimented with. Uh, well, f before I get into that, I just want to say, like, I thought I could have potentially had a, uh, a fracture. Um, but more than anything, because of, because the impact wasn't solely on that part of the ankle. It was more like, uh, because it was my toes and it just ripped shit. Um, I was, I was more afraid, like, the, just the tearing of, of ligaments and stuff. But, uh, it, it was so bad. I, uh, I couldn't really move my foot at all. And it was in, it was one of those pains where, like, you just, no matter where you move, like, you can't fucking get comfortable and you're just, you're just kind of waiting for your body to find a place to where it's just even just just a little less painful like i'll just take that <laughs> you know just just a little bit less pain just just anything so i i meditated and kind of uh i guess you could call it nap but i mean with that kind of pain you, you don't really get into any kind of deep sleep it's just a meditative type of sleep it's like uh just almost you're just kind of uh 
writing it out, like essentially, but you can allow yourself. And constantly also the entire time I was like, do not let your shit, your breath get shallow. Like, because that, that also is something that happens, well, not just in this fucking world we live in with people anyways, but also uh, when we get injured, like, uh, everything will tighten up, and especially our breath. It will become uh, very uh, uh, condensed. So I, I kept going into that saying, kept, no, you have to get that full breath. And, and that really seemed to help uh, the healing process quite a bit as well. So all these things that I did seemed to really help. Um, but yeah, it was, it was so bad I couldn't move. Uh, I didn't even want to move my whole fucking leg. Um, definitely couldn't even move my toes. I couldn't move my foot at all. Uh, so one thing I, I did, I have, I have these magnets that I use, um, and I use it like the magnets with my organite, uh, with, with, uh, all the crystals and like the, uh, the stones that I have, uh, I use those for, uh, some of my drinks that I have. I use that for all of the alcohol that I drink. They, it all gets charged up with magnets and organite. So uh, I decided, okay, I need to remember this, 4133, so I want to make a timestamp with that. Um, I decided to experiment with the magnets that I had, and uh, this was very interesting. Like Right now, as we speak, I have magnets on my foot, but like, I'm not feeling anything, anything from them, really. But uh, whenever there was that much... Uh, pain still involved uh last night and this was just last night yeah this just happened uh friday and i'm making this the, the night after <laughs> so uh i use these magnets and as soon as i i, I put a magnet even uh relatively close to my uh foot and it's my, my bottom of my foot, like the top, um, yeah, just all around the side there. Um, as soon as I did that and brought it into pro close proximity, I immediately noticed like uh, quite a bit of pain. So at first, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't just for me uh, touching the magnets, like any kind of just... Uh, touch physical sensation t to my to my skin or to the area so i needed to make sure that that's not what was really occurring so uh yeah i i, I found out that no it was the magnets uh so I, I i spent a little bit of time just moving the magnets around just different areas and finally like after a little bit uh the pain started to get less and less it was still uh extremely painful but uh it wasn't as painful as when I first put the magnets on. So I'm not for sure if uh, Zigzag said that he used magnets with his uh, wrist. But if you did, and this is why I wanted to timestamp this, because I wanted to ask you. If you did use magnets, I wanted to know what your experiences were like. Because I've never experienced anything like this. I don't think I've ever really used magnets uh, for the healing process or for injury. So to wit, so to experience that 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 much uh, that kind of response that was uh, very fascinating and intriguing, and it also made me wonder, <laughs> you know, uh, how much fucking iron do I have in my blood, or what kind of fucking metals do I have in there to have like this much fucking sensation happen? But like, it only happened whenever there was that much pain. Because right now, and I'm not, I'm not 100% yet, but how much I healed and how quickly, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I tapped him up to my inner Wolverine. I definitely kept uh, zigzag in mind whenever this was happening because I'm like, man, I must be fucking getting on them zigzag vibes because in them wolverine vibes because this is uh it, it surprised the fuck out of me because i at least expected for that much pain that i was in um i mean i usually heal pretty quick but you know i expected probably a good 
four days to a week where I was either not going to be able to work or I was going to be limping around for a while. So just, just in, what, half a fucking day, even, to, to start, to, to be able to walk on it again, I was, yeah, man, I was, I was so fucking happy, just, just to be able to walk on it, I'm not even just so crazy surprised, but, uh, just, just very, uh, grateful and thankful, especially, more than anything. So yeah, Magnus. Oh, okay. I tried out something. <clears throat> as soon as I uh, got back to work, and this is also something I like to do after like uh, hard workouts, is uh, immediately uh, taking that that urine uh, back into my body. So uh, immediately after um, that workout, the first urine that I had, I, I took that in because I'm like. I mean, I, I, I've been doing uh, the Orin therapies, if you want to call it that. Uh, probably a little over a year. Maybe around two years. So, I mean, I, and, I, and I've looped uh, quite a few times. So, I'm pretty, pretty attuned and, and aware of the effects that it has on the body. And, and also, I loved when Zigzag mentioned it whenever uh, him and uh, the Mayan Jin did their video together. I loved when uh, Zigzag mentioned how the urine will uh, absolutely uh, stimulate your digestive system and also like clean that shit out. Like, the, <laughs> man, like I've been wanting to talk about this like to people, and I and I do sometimes, but I mean. It's not usually the people that, that do it themselves. So it's just like, oh, okay. But yeah, the smells, man. It's like, it's 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 crazy. Like, uh, the stuff that comes out. And the smells. Just just from uh, taking in the, the Oren. Which also, uh, it was one of the things that I commented on. Uh, the Awakened Brave. Uh, whenever him and Zen did their chat together, um, I, I put in a comment that I found it very odd that he... And I wasn't challenging him at all or anything. And I said that, you know, I'm not coming at you like that. I just I just uh, find it very odd that you said that you didn't have... Uh, you didn't notice anything happen. And I'm like, uh, at the very least, your your bowels would have been evacuating. But then I also, you know, gave out, uh, like, maybe, like, reasons. Like, maybe it's because you, you you are always getting so much sun. Maybe it's because you always have been uh, so fit and, and, you know, pump so much iron. And you're already so, like, uh, aware and awakened or, or whatever. So I'm like, uh, maybe all those factors ha have a play into, into why. Um, I was kind of hoping for some kind of a response, but I didn't get any kind of response from that, which, which is all good. I don't care. That. But so yeah, right right after I, I immediately ingested that uh, Orin back, and that uh, I have never ingested Orin after I've had a uh, I won't say severe injury, but I mean at the time, like <laughs> definitely felt uh, an injury with that much pain, where my central nervous system was firing off like to, on that degree. I've never consumed my urine whenever that has happened. So, to see the, the coloration, and I knew it was going to be dark, because usually whenever your body's going through some shit, like, you're going to have darker urine. Um, partly, probably because, like, your body needs a lot more hydration, and a lot of times we, we, we aren't giving ourselves that hydration as well, just in general. But especially whenever you have an injury, your your body your body needs um, hydration in the correct proportions, but also the once again the, the quality of it of what you're putting in that's, that's of the utmost importance. So 
so yeah um but i also really think that um taking in that that orin god my fucking cat she's probably wanting me to remind to, to, to talk about whenever she did the same fucking shit with her leg and uh instead of taking her to the vet i allowed her to uh, play it out and it was very interesting she had already witnessed me using my urine for for a while in various different ways so uh it's very interesting to see that she would and the smell of it was unlike anything that i have ever smelled from um my cat or anything it was very very bizarre smelling but i went ahead and kind of like let her have her own little room so that you know she was going to do whatever she needed to do in there, and if she, you know, went to the bathroom all over the place, then I would just be able to uh, have the things laid out to where I would clean that away. But that's what she did. She she used her urine and peed on stuff, and then laid in that. And she did this for probably a few days, and she healed pretty fucking quick. I, I was not not just and once again, like I was I was so fucking thankful because I I just had my other cat, uh, pass away, and so this happened to her, because I let her go outside, because, uh, she, she always comes back, she, she does whatever she wants, and then always comes back inside whenever she's ready, but, uh, so yeah, so then this cat, I'm like, god damn it, like, <laughs> now I'm gonna have both fucking cats die on me, that's great. And I've had them for a while, so I mean, you get super attached to your pets whenever you have that connection. It's like losing a fucking kid, man. Uh, whenever I lost my first uh, cat, whose name was Zen, who I, I named it, I named him Zen before I even knew anything about Zen Atman. So if you want to fucking go into that, oh, you're naming your pets Zen. No. There, there was a time whenever I found Zen Atman, actually, the first time I started listening to his videos, I was not at a place where I could listen to anything that he said. So I didn't follow Zen at all. I listened to some of the stuff, but, and maybe <laughs> also it was because uh, I, I, there were some of his videos that, you know, he, 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 where he was a little abrasive, maybe. I'm not for sure, but it was just, I hadn't done the inner work yet, so I wasn't able to... Uh, connect and, and vibe with that to understand like what was going on and then finally after i started doing my deep fast and uh taking in the orin like uh yeah i really started to connect up and, and listen and learn from uh the at man the ao and in doing so he was the catalyst why I started making videos, why I even started connecting with people on YouTube. And not just with YouTube, but I mean, that was kind of like just the starting grounds for me, like the practice for me to start to actually uh, talk more just uh, with, with everyone everywhere. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Zen, Zen has helped so many fucking people do, do just this um, exact thing that's happened to me. Uh, more so than, than, yeah, I think that he probably realizes. But uh, he's had a very profound beneficial effect on people, even if sometimes it's, uh, you know, <laughs> firing off of people or being combative with them or whatever. But I mean, it's it's all a learning experience and a lesson to not take things so seriously and not take ourselves so seriously ultimately so yeah like uh my cat she she utilized her fucking urine and she she healed her leg and i i how she was acting i was pretty damn sure that her leg was uh I didn't think it was a severe break, but I, I definitely thought it was a fracture. I could tell by how she was uh, allowing me to uh, touch certain areas, but whenever I got to that one little spot, like, she was not fucking having that at all. And how she was walking, like, the limp was really fucking bad. She was a, she was a tripod, she was a three-legged animal for a while there. But, uh, yeah, eventually she, 
she came out of it. But and I also wanted to say, uh, this is what animals do whenever they have injuries. They fast. They they don't eat. Uh, she also didn't drink, which uh, she dried up quite a bit. And that's kind of what scared me the most. And I didn't know if she was going to survive it. So I, I, I actually... I wanted to make sure she was at least getting some kind of liquids because she wouldn't drink and to, to see her eat sometimes like she couldn't it was hard for her to get enough moisture in her mouth to even get her tongue out to really eat or drink or, or anything but I mean she wasn't drinking anyways but so I had a little dropper so I would I would put some uh, uh, either some water and I would uh, squirt that in her mouth which <laughs> of course she didn't like but I mean she she would uh, drink at least a little bit of that doing it that way. So I was making sure that she was getting some, she wasn't completely fucking drying up. Uh, so I used different, different things too. I would get bone broth. I, I used, I utilized bone broth whenever she uh, broke her leg and I, I put that in to some of her food that she would eat. So she, she definitely utilized bone broth and, and I think that probably helped her quite a bit in, in healing. And then also just allowing her to fucking do her thing. Oh shit, I'm getting low battery. Oh my god. Oh my god! Stop! Okay, un momento. Oh my gosh. Results. Is that great? Um, you know, just as maintenance, but not. Well, that's going to have to be good enough. Oh, thank God. Because it gets to a point, and hopefully that didn't pop up there, where it's like, oh, by the way, you got low, uh, low memory. But, but, oh, hey, this is what YouTube does to me, too, in some of my lives. But, oh, hey, we're going to keep recording, um, even though, you know, it's not going to save anything. So YouTube does this to me, this fucking phone does this to me. But whenever that happens, I lose the entire fucking video. So I didn't want, want to let that happen with this one. Because that's a uh, fucking hour down the drain. Which, once again, has happened to me with YouTube as well. Which, for a while there, I didn't even want to do lives. Because that kept happening to me. So yeah. Whenever I ingest in my... Uh, oh yeah, these are these two cats here that are talking about this. The one on the left is Robert Kassar. The one on the right, uh, I don't remember his name. He's a doctor too, but uh, <laughs> he's the one uh, giving these uh, fucking weird balloon shots up the nose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the I have never ingested uh, urine that had that quality of my own. Well, I've never ingested anyone else's urine either, but <laughs> um. I'm not that freaky, guys. So, uh, the taste was, uh, very unique. I can't, there's no way you can explain, like, certain things that have certain qualities, uh, and, uh especially uniqueness, like, words fail to encapsulate, uh, new experiences, especially. Um, it wasn't hard to get down, though, because there's been times where, like, uh, say, you... Uh, the morning after you uh, drink 
a whole bunch of spirits or whatever, or you eat a whole bunch of stupid food. Uh, your your urine will not only just be so fucking salty, but just just all around, <laughs> not something you can get down. But this I was able to get down, and I think that that's probably why I ultimately uh, healed so quickly. Oh, just just the many things. Uh, first of all, like I I, I allowed the pain to happen. I, I didn't go for the uh, uh, painkillers, even though it, it was a, uh, an immense amount of pain, and I have a whole bunch of different kind of natural herbs that, that I uh, can use and do use uh, that that could have helped with that, and, and I would have been absolutely fine with doing so. But just for this experience, I decided I didn't want to do that. I I, I thought it was going to uh, take away from the uh, the quickness of my healing process, and I think I was probably correct on that. But uh, yeah, that was that was a lot of fucking pain. It was really bizarre to like have my heart kind of like centralize that pain, and then uh, I don't know. I just felt like my because of the pain, my body was uh, creating certain I don't want to call it antibodies. I don't really know what to call it. Uh, hormones to uh specific things that that my body needed to uh expedite uh the healing processes but the magnets were very fucking interesting that I used those um I'm not for sure if that aided the speeding or sp sped up the healing process or not but I do know for sure uh, I felt something from it. it. That that was pretty interesting to feel that kind of sensation from a magnet. I've never felt that before. So I'm curious if that like only happens with like uh, injuries or whenever certain things are in your blood. Maybe there's a certain concentration of uh, a certain chemical or something, or a certain I don't know something that the magnet was affecting. So that was awesome. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, the knot on my shin, and I think this is kind of pretty common with with uh, knots on your shins. Like they'll, they'll heal relatively quickly, but like for how huge that sucker was, um, now it's just like fairly quickly. It just you know was completely level, uh, and then it was just a, a big old bruise there. But uh, I would at least expect you know. Like, uh, some kind of a knot there to be left over. Because I've had, like, knots on my shins before. And, uh, have them stay, stay there for, for a little while. But, uh, this was a huge freaking knot. And, uh, it's, it's completely flat. Like, I don't feel anything. There's just that bruise and, and quite a bit of soreness. But, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Interesting times. Very, uh, very awesome. Very awesome shit to experience. I'm very <laughs> grateful to not be hobbling about for a week or however long that normally probably would have took me to, to heal that. Um, because of the lack of inner work that I had yet to do in the past. So with an injury like that, um, that would have probably taken quite a long time to heal. So, uh, yeah, my sleep was a little irregular um, that night because immediately I kind of napped and meditated. It wasn't a nap. I was I was more awake than asleep, so it was more just like a uh, a focused meditation where I was uh, continuously trying to keep my breath open, like full inhales, full exhales, and not allowing allowing it to turtle back up and be contracted and constricted because that's kind of like what my body just wanted to do like my whole body just wanted to tighten up and constrict because of all the pain so like allowing that, that breath just that that helps so much also just uh in the moment with the pain just just 
relaxing, get, getting those natural uh, hormones and chemicals to, to rebalance with your breath. Utilizing your breath is so fucking underrated. So literally everything you do in your goddamn life is going to um, absolutely um, involve your breath and be dependent upon your breath and how you choose to breathe. Because that's going to dictate your brain waves and, and where your mind is, where your focus is, where you want the engagement to happen. This is why I constantly recommend people get into pranayama and different kind of breathing te techniques and Wim Hof, look into Wim Hof and start doing these fucking things. Don't just look into them, do them. <laughs> this is This is what it's all about, applied knowledge. Like, we can sit here and be scholastics and then learn about shit, but I mean, that doesn't amount to shit unless you can apply the, the, the things that you learn. There's, there's a, such a vast difference between thinking we know about something or learning about something secondhand and then applying it for ourselves and experience uh, learning through experience. That is uh, the only really true uh, wisdom and uh, learning that happens is through gnosis is that direct experience uh, that's that's how we learn because that's that's where the connections happen that's where the engagement is so not only like do you need that for your mind but your body needs that your body needs that felt experience and felt emotion and it will help you store the memory as well So yeah, let's see what else. I think that's about it. This is a pretty long one here. Okay, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I was going to say, uh, after I was actually able, some of the pain has subsided and I was actually able to sleep a little bit. I didn't get all that much sleep. I probably got... Uh, and I'm the type of person that wakes up frequently. Uh, usually. It just depends. If I'm fasting... I will, uh, part of the cleansing process is you will constantly, uh, wake up and have to urinate. Oh no, low storage. Okay, so that is really interesting. Uh, the low storage thing popped up again. And I was like, it was like an hour, seven minutes. And so I'm like, well, I, I just lost all of that. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, those feelings of disgust, anger, but I mean, I don't know. It's like, well, God damn it. I should I should have prevented this. So I deleted some other other videos on here. And then I kept scrolling through and then all of a sudden there popped up the video. So uh that's the first time that that's ever happened. So that's that's bizarre. Cuz it doesn't save it right after it says that and I stopped the video. Uh, normally, whenever I'm ending a video on this, it has this time period where it stops and saves. But that didn't happen. So, so yeah, I don't know. That's cool. Got lucky. <laughs> I guess y'all are supposed to hear this. I don't, I don't fucking know. That's cool. Part of the part of the advanced learning crew here. Part of the Wolverines. Yo, shout out Wolverines. Hashtag. Keeping it Wolverine style. So yeah, what what was that? Where was I at? Uh, I think I was at like you know uh, part of my part of your fasting or cleansing. Whenever you're in like a, a fast, uh, it's I I think it's beneficial to wake up uh, multiple times during your sleep cycle to have to uh, urinate, and then also I would recommend to uh, drink to rehydrate yourself and drink more. Uh, that way, yeah, you probably will have to keep getting up, but that's going to continue this uh, the process of uh, cleansing that's happening. Because whenever we sleep, we go through some deep cleansing and detox that happens. Uh, way more so than, than what we even uh, realize. Once, you're, once you... Uh, allow your body to relax on that level like that's whenever the deep sh the deep healing happens which is which is why usually whenever i do uh energy healing or reiki on people like why 
I, well, first of all, like, usually they, they pretty instantaneously pass the fuck out on me, but also, like, that's, uh, that, that's, I see that as a good thing, because now I'm really able to get in, like, they've relaxed their body down completely, their mind isn't getting in the way anymore, and it's just kind of, uh, me and the energetics of their body, and, uh, really, uh, getting down to some deep, deep healing. But that's not to say that I, and this is just going off on, on many different directions here, but that's not saying that I don't engage their mind still, because a lot of times, whenever people is asleep, I can engage them better, or if they're in a meditative state, or a trance state, um, I can engage, uh, a lot of deeper healing and it may not like uh, they may not realize what's happening on like a uh, more um outer level like the outer shells of your conscious it this is uh working within this uh the deeper subtle uh, realms here Uh, the, the inner psyche, and so like uh, the deep healing, the deep transitions will will start and begin there, and I will be able to tap in and help guide them um, into uh, memories that's within their body, but also within their uh, you know immediate lifetime experience, their current lifetime experience, and uh, really um, not shy away from these memories, but engage them, understand them, feel them. Allow the feeling and the awareness to come in, and so the healing can come in there. And that will reflect in whatever ailment they have in their body. So yeah, I got... I got about an hour of sleep before I had to get up and... Uh, and go pee, and then I got about three hours of sleep after that, before I had to get up and go to my uh, niece and nephew's uh, basketball game, which, uh, it was at the Y, um, it's youth basketball, like, and they're, they're so young that they just kind of like, it's, it's <laughs> very loosely basketball in that, you know, a basketball is involved and hoops are involved, and there are teams, but there's not really any fouls or, or anything like that. There's no stealing, there's just blocking, and then they, it's just, it was very, uh, very enjoyable and uh, awesome. <laughs> it, it was just awesome, it brought a lot of, that That too, just, just, the, fa just the act of, of going and watching these little kids have fun, um, that that probably also aided, to be honest, that probably also aided in my healing process. Because at that time period, whenever I first woke up, I didn't know if I was going to go or not, because I was still in quite a bit of pain. But I, I decided that I needed to go, and, and so I went. Because I'm like, no, I need to not, not think about me right now and uh, do it for them. This is what I did. And uh, so after that, I came back and I napped for three more hours, I think, around there. And then whenever I woke up from that one, oh man, it was a huge difference. I got, I, could, I had a lot more mobility, a lot less pain. So I, was, I was pleasantly surprised. And then right now, like, as I'm recording this, like, uh, I have damn near full mobility uh, there is tightness. Woohoo! I got a little bit too uh, loosey goosey with it, moving it around. <laughs> yeah, it's still it's still finalizing the healing. <laughs> Damn, I felt that one. But uh, yeah, it's Jesus from from what it was just uh, twenty four hours ago to to what it is now. That's, wow. More than anything, like, I'm just, I'm just really fucking thankful. Thankful that I've done this inner work, that I'm able to experience this, that I'm able to share this, that 
I'm able to see people like zigzag, uh, freaking break his wrist and then heal it in four days and, and share that with us. And, you know, of course, like, that was playing in my mind and I was, you know, connecting with those energies as well. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's been really cool. Okay, also, uh, ju just to end this real quick, and I think I'll be able to merge both of these videos into one and then put it up on YouTube. Hopefully I can. That way I don't have to do two different uploads. Just because I feel like people will view the short upload <laughs> more than this fucking hour and seven minute one. But, uh, with this Robert Kassar stuff, um, he does, he does go into advanced healing and, and really gets down into like, uh, in-depth, um, understandings of how the body works, but I do feel, and I felt this for quite a while, probably right around whenever I first started, to be honest, hmm, now that I think about it, I was into, uh, Robert Kassar big time, uh, for probably, a, I don't know, half a year or so before, right before I started to get into uh, Zen Atman. And then because of that, like everyone I connect with, which is just absolutely beautiful beyond words. Uh, the connections that are happening uh, with, with everyone uh, seeing this happen, but also, you know, uh, like I've said before, like both polarities are, are, are uh, peaking right now so like in my experience I'm seeing uh, more connections and more amazing awarenesses happen uh, more than ever but I'm also seeing the, the other end of the spectrum happening and being thrown at me specifically more than ever and yes you know and I do agree with you know you're going to attract yourself your own likeness shit let's see if we can lighten that up with uh, other means. What about that? Yeah. But uh, also, like, if you if you put yourself in certain situations to where you're gonna be around like a whole multitude of energies, like uh, it it can be hard to navigate at times um, to keep yourself. Uh, constantly uh i don't want to use the term like guarded or shielded but essentially like that's kind of what it is it's you you have your own uh essence and light built up enough that um any of that uh outer crap is just going to bounce off of you it's not even going to get close to like, being able to get like quote unquote underneath your skin it's just going to uh, bounce off of that like uh you can call it an aura aura or like an etheric uh, shielding essentially that that's happened from uh, your cultivation of uh, your love and your awareness and the gnosis that the work that you've done inside but um, yeah and, and it's just it's very I mean I, I know what's going on here because I know what's uh, at work through people and it's not even the people themselves. And that's why I constantly have to bring myself back to the realization that of these things that are uh, using people, essentially. Because uh, so many times I will have people come at me and they don't they don't understand why, where that came from, why they decided to act out like that. Um, they, they know deep down that it was unwarranted and that there is no reason for it. There's no logic behind it, of course, but, um, and it will just be out of nowhere. All of a sudden they need to act or they feel the need or, and because of, they have no inner control at all, most people, uh, these things, uh, are able to influence them and just, 
do as they please. So uh, I'm constantly having having that stuff happen, and it's just <laughs> by any means a pity party or or, <laughs> or or anything like that. I'm just saying I'm well aware of what's going on here, and uh, I don't I don't blame the people, and as far as what they are doing and why they are doing it, but I do uh, I am disappointed that they don't have their own level of uh, awareness built up to where they can control themselves. That's that's the disappointing thing that happens for me. It's just uh, you, you should be able to control yourself at least at least enough not to go psycho mode randomly at a random fucking person. Because I mean a lot of people don't they don't uh, <laughs> know me personally. But of course, you know, they do know me because that's why they these things are happening through them because that energy knows me. And this isn't to go on the other end either and be like, oh, I'm so special that things are coming after me. <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying that that's not the case. But what I am saying that is whenever you reach a certain place of uh, um, You've done enough inner work, and, and this is going to be uh, the people that have done this. Like they, they know what the fuck I'm talking about because they've experienced it. Uh, certain energies will get at you, uh, as in like they will try to get at you, and a lot of times they will use people to do so. And unfortunately, a lot of times those people will be the people that are closest to you, and that's where the true damage and uh, trauma and pain can uh, really uh, happen. If we allow it to. So in my situation right now. Uh, in my life. In this incarnation. I guess it's kind of. I'm kind of uh, a little bit lucky. That. Um, I'm not connected with any of my family. Uh, really on any kind of a deep level. Um, so. I've like. So I guess you could say since day one, um, I've had those energies come through them. Uh, um, so I became desensitized to that. But then eventually, I finally started to fucking break away from myself and heal myself. And then able to see things for uh, how they really are. And then uh, not let those things affect me anymore. Well, first of all, I didn't let them affect me after I was able to finally get away. Uh, get a certain age and then get the fuck away. But then finally I was able to do enough uh, very, very deep work, uh, go into hermit mode enough times, uh, find my inner solitude and inner sanctuary to where I, I was able to understand a lot of the more uh, subtle nuances of how the world works, of how energies work, of how, <sighs> where people operate at, what they allow, why basically just the why of it why people act the way they do sometimes especially towards us especially whenever we're waking up and uh, choosing to do our inner work and I also wanted to give a little bit of encouragement for people who are on that path Whenever you make the choice to engage that and to heal yourself, you will have people come at you to, to, to try and make you feel guilty, to try to throw you off of that path. They will try to make it seem like, and they will try to convince you that you are being selfish because you are not paying attention to them. You are not giving your energy away willy-nilly like they are, like everyone else is. You're not going along with the game and the bullshit. You're not going along with the rat race. What are you doing? How selfish of you. How narcissistic of you. To How egotistical of you. To, to just... Spend time with yourself? What, what are you thinking? You'll, you'll have so many different kinds of weird things thrown at you. And at first, you know... Um, you will kind of go back and forth or you will start to entertain some of these things and, and question yourself, but uh, keep going within. Keep finding your inner 
balance and your inner guidance. Reattune to your own inner guidance system. And uh, nothing can fucking touch you at that point because you'll realize what you really are, baby. <laughs> what we are, what we all really are. And at that point, like it doesn't necessarily really matter anymore what happens at these physical bodies because we realize what we truly are. But also, like within these bodies, this is when we have the opportunity and the chance to uh, to change shit here. So do try, <laughs> do do try to stay in these bodies while, while you can, so that we can, if. Uh, <laughs> If you are an awake and aware person and not a complete ignorant bio robot fucking regurgitator indoctrinated to the gills, I'm not gonna say, <laughs> I'm not gonna go fucking zit at me and just like, you need to fucking just go ahead and kill yourself. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be like, well. Basically, you're not even alive at that point. You're already dead because you don't know who or what you are. So, uh, you, it's not the fear of death. It's the fear of life. Um, they're afraid to truly live. So, yeah, part of that is just the bombardment that you're going to get of, of all the fucking uh, corruption that's uh that's prevalent everywhere like they they it's whatever you want to call it that energy will come at you through people to try to throw you off your path stay the course stay the course quite a few of us are starting to actually connect now and come out and uh i don't know we'll, we'll see what comes of it like how far we can go this time around but we're kind of at the point where enough of us is coming out that it's like uh well it's now or never let's fucking go let's go for it okay before i end this i just want to say uh Definitely check out Robert Kassar. You can learn a lot. I, I did like the lymphatic stuff. Uh, he has a lot of good info. I will also say that I believe um, there's a lot of more holistic approaches. As in, the body does all, so much fucking more than than what we think it can do, than what we are, have been led to believe, and what we are aware of. So uh, we don't have to use so many artificial uh, mechanisms and tools to uh, to heal ourselves as much as realize the deep level engagements. So whenever do, they're doing this, uh, whatever he calls it, cranial facial release here, where you blow, blow your fucking balloon up your goddamn nasal cavity, I would say you there are techniques to where you can do this just with your breath. And, and closing some of your portals and then blowing very deeply and having air pockets within those places. But also just just use, utilizing the Wim Hof method even. That's going to clear out. Because one of the huge things that they talk about is like, oh, all the gunk that will come out after you've uh, opened up and cleared away. It's like, well, what do you think happens whenever you breathe fucking uh, continuously, consistently, and heavily? With exertion, a whole bunch of fucking shit comes out. So a lot of the stuff that that this guy presents, and I mean, he does sell a lot of uh, supplements as well, which um, I would recommend. Just if you're gonna supplement, learn learn as much as you can about the more natural side than like natural supplements. If anything, just get just try to get the actual plants just do your research on uh what what effects certain plants will have if if you're interested in any of that at all like i i i take uh many different kind of plants in me so i mean i'm well aware of uh many different kinds of effects that many different kinds of plants have so if anyone's interested in any of that uh ask me a question or, or whatever about any of that 
I will tell you what I take. At times, sometimes. But, um... Yeah, also where I was getting at is... It was right around when I started... Um, I was into this guy. Then I started utilizing urine therapy, if you want to call it that. Uh, and then I started you know, messaging on some of his videos about... Man, like, you know... We can do all this with our pee, like, and especially I started to watch uh, We Do Shavambu videos and watching, uh, and through him, he, connecting with a whole bunch of other people that were uh, benefiting and healing from so many different kinds of, uh, you could call them diseases. Um, that they had, any literally anything and everything, and I think We Do that that guy uh, Casey. Uh, he probably had probably the most like ailments and diseases in him, and he got off of you know being on addicted to pain meds to anything and everything, and and healing his body and having a, a tremendous uh, transformation happen. So yeah, so it was right after that, and then I started leaving comments on some of uh, Robert Cassart's videos, and of course, you know, uh, the responses I got, you know, of course, <laughs> they're going to be your average average response to uh, people that don't know anything about uh, utilizing their own waters. So that was humorous. But then also, right after that, that's when, like, I don't know, I just connected with, with uh, the Atman and uh and here I am connecting with with everyone because of that so yeah, just much gratitude for all y'all like awesome people that <sighs> that have chosen to feel very deeply, even though that means that you're gonna have to feel the into the pain. You didn't let that stop you. You kept fucking going. And that's why, like, I connect with you. It's because, in that sense, like, yeah, you, you do attract your likeness to you. In that, like, the, the, the strength. You'll, you'll attract your own inner strengths to you, like, definitely. As well as the weaknesses. But, you know, it, whenever you are within your core and your strengths and you have that, uh, etheric shield of, of just your fucking awesomeness surrounding you like the bullshit isn't going to get under your skin but it's going to take you know those they'll fucking definitely chip away at it chip 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 until finally like you, you just that last thing will happen and you just can't fucking take anymore Arr! we're all go we all go through our processes with this shit but yeah just Fucking shout out to all you awesome fucking people. Thank you for being uh, authentic and genuine. And thank you for feeling. Thank you for fucking not shying away from the fucking pain. But deciding to go into it and learn from it. And feel and deal with it. And then truly fucking heal. That's how you truly fucking heal. You gotta go into the pain and feel that shit baby. All in. Alright, that's enough. <laughs> that's pretty long. Love y'all. Peace.